With so much uncertainty in many aspects of our lives right now, a lot of people are wondering what they should do with their money. And of course, everyone has different opinions on this. Some people think that you should invest everything you have, while others are saying that you should keep all your cash on the sidelines. But the truth is, there's no one-size-fits-all solution of what you should be doing with your money today. So let's discuss some of the best options available right now, not only to keep a roof over your head and food on the table, but also to ensure that you come out of this ahead financially than where you started. Let's jump right into it. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here and you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe and let me know in the comment section what video you'd like to see next. Like seriously, just ask and I will actually answer you. So when it comes to times of uncertainty, when people are being laid off left and right, the first and most obvious thing to do with your money is to save it. And in order to do that, you need to reduce your spending. I'm sure we have all experienced this over the past month or so, but we have all learned very quickly what things are truly essential and what things may have been wasted money in our day-to-day -day lives. In order to to properly save your money, you first need to understand where you are spending your money. So I highly recommend that you use one of the online softwares like Mint or You Need a Budget. Mint is a free app that I've talked about before and it's my personal go-to for keeping track of my spending as well as my income across various accounts. You Need a Budget is a paid service but is much more comprehensive and while I haven't used it personally myself, I do have friends who swear by it and say that they can't live without it. Regardless of what software you use, keeping track of your spending in some way, even if it's just a spreadsheet online, is extremely important in order to pinpoint where you can cut back on your spending. After keeping track of your spending for at least a few weeks, you can then break down your spending into two categories, which are discretionary spending and mandatory spending. Discretionary is basically all of the things that you want, like going out to eat or going shopping, and while these are important for maintaining a happy lifestyle, they are not absolutely life-sustaining. Mandatory spending, on the other hand, is the essential things like food, water, and in the current situation, toilet paper. Focus specifically on your discretionary discretionary spending and pinpoint areas that you can live without, especially if you are currently hurting financially. Even if you still have a stable job and income, it may not be a bad idea to take a closer look at your spending and pinpoint those areas where you can cut back, especially if you haven't already established an emergency fund. That brings us to the next best thing to do with your money right now, and that is by establishing an emergency fund. Now, I know it may be sounding like I am preaching the ways of Dave Ramsey, but there is a lot of merit to having a substantial emergency fund, especially during times of financial difficulty. I'm sure there are a lot of individuals who are currently kicking themselves, wishing that they had saved three to six months of expenses in the case of a drastic economic decline like this one. Your emergency fund should include every single expense that you can think of, including all of your monthly payments such as your rent, your car payment, your utilities, your cell phone bill, and literally anything else that you pay on a regular basis. The general recommendation is to have three to six months of expenses, but if possible, I would definitely shoot for the six month range since three months is often not a long enough period of time for individuals to get back on their feet financially. Now, it's also important that you make this money readily available and have quick and easy access to it when you need it. The money you set aside for an emergency fund is not something that should be invested in some volatile stock or even invested in a stable index fund. Personally, I would set this money aside in a high interest savings account so that it is easily accessible when you need it. A lot of people have different opinions on this and some will say that you should invest this large sum of money in a broad index fund but I would argue that in times of crisis, this investment will likely dip dramatically in value, meaning that you would have to sell it for a loss in order to access your emergency fund. For example, let's say you invested your $50,000 emergency fund in a broad market ETF like VOO, which is a Vanguard ETF that tracks the S&P 500. While VOO is widely regarded as a broad and diversified investment, it has lost 22% of its value since its recent highs because of the current health crisis that shall not be named. This means that your $50,000 emergency fund would only be worth $39,000 and you would have to sell it in order to access it. Yes, there is the potential for financial gain by investing this large sum of money, but I promise when you need this money most, you will be glad that you have it easily accessible in a high interest savings account that isn't falling through the floor because it's invested. The good news is that once you've established your emergency fund and have it set aside in a high interest savings account, you can begin to invest your additional saved money after we discuss step three, which is paying off high interest debts, such as credit cards or other personal personal loans. This one is pretty straightforward, but during times of financial hardship, the last thing you want to be doing is giving money hand over fist to the bank. So once you've established your emergency fund and have cut back on your spending, you can take advantage of your current adjusted lifestyle in order to pay off these high interest debts. This is also a great time to refinance any large loans 
that you may have, such as a mortgage, since interest rates typically fall during a recessionary period. This means that you could get a fixed rate mortgage at today's very low interest rates and pay much less to the bank in the future, even when this difficult period passes. So now you've cut back on your spending, established a stable emergency fund, and begun to pay off your high interest debts but none of this really matters if you aren't able to maintain your income. Whether you've lost your job, had your income reduced, or you're simply worried about the possibility of losing your job, I think we can all agree that the current job market is pretty treacherous considering 10 million Americans have claimed unemployment in the past two weeks alone. Depending on your career, there are ways to ensure job stability, but I really want to focus on the present as the most important thing is that you earn as much money as you can while you're employed. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to predict what tomorrow may hold not only for you financially, but for the entire world. However, the one thing you can control is your earning potential today and how much you're taking advantage of your greatest wealth building tool, which is your income. Maybe this means working more hours, but like I've said before, working more hours is not always the best solution. So I encourage you to seek out performance-based income, whether that be through your current job or some sort of side hustle. While there are businesses that are shuttering their doors left and right, there are many places that are ramping up production of necessary devices and are in dire need of workforce as a result. Either way, it's important to remember that any money that you're able to make now is not only worth more in the sense that it can help you survive this crisis financially, but this money can also be used towards very important financial steps like establishing an emergency fund, paying off those high interest debts that we talked about, and investing while the markets are at such a low price. That brings us to the fifth option of what to do with your money right now, and that is investing it. I have heard time and time again from so many people who wish they had taken advantage of the buying opportunity that was the Great Recession. While the market hasn't dipped nearly as much as it did in 2008 and 2009, this is still one of the best buying opportunities that we have seen in many, many years. So by increasing your income as much as possible, you'll be able to take advantage of this opportunity and invest at a bargain price. Now, I am by no means a financial expert or a financial advisor of any type, and this is just my strategy and what I am doing to take advantage of the current market conditions. But I believe that it is impossible to time the bottom of the market, and even those who have done it successfully in the past often get lucky and we're never really sure if the bottom was in. Instead of trying to time the market perfectly and missing out on this great buying opportunity, I would recommend that you start averaging into your chosen investments. If you aren't familiar with the method of averaging in, it's essentially when you purchase your investments little by little over a consistent time period. So instead of trying to call the bottom of the market and putting all of your available capital in at once, you can start averaging in slowly and purchase your investments over a set period of time, whether that be a few weeks or a few months. Statistically, this is the most effective way to invest your money. And even if you don't time the bottom of the market perfectly, you are still averaging into your investments and can therefore protect yourself from poor timing while still taking advantage of the extreme volatility going on right now. I do have a few videos on my channel with my personal recommendations of where to invest, but again, this is just my opinion and it is absolutely not financial advice in any way. Make sure to do your own research and use the countless resources at your disposal to make the best investment choices for you. I personally like index funds, whether that be a traditional index fund, a bond index fund, or even a real estate index fund. These are diversified, have low management fees, and often pay a consistent and stable dividend four times a year. But this may not be the best option for you, and it's important that you pinpoint your investment goals and decide the best course of action to reach them. So at this point, you have cut back on your spending, established an emergency fund, paid off your high interest debts, increased your earning potential, and job stability, and begun to take advantage of the buying opportunity in the stock market right now. In my opinion, these are five fantastic steps that you can take to better your financial future regardless of where the economy is at. But during times of crisis, those are my focus and something that will not only benefit you financially, but will also give you an immense peace of mind knowing that even through financial hardship, you will be prepared and not only survive, but thrive well into the coming years. I often say that riches are made in recessions, and while this is a very difficult time for a lot of people, there is an immense amount of opportunity for those who are prepared and ready to act. I highly recommend that you check out my last video by clicking right here, where we talked about the best practices that can make you rich during a recession if you wanna come out better off than you were before. With that being said, make sure to do your own research and take a course of action that is best for your financial situation. Like I said, there's no one size fits all solution, so it's important that you carefully plan and allocate every single dollar properly, especially under the current circumstances. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to check out my channel. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, seriously, leave them down in the comment section below and I will answer you, and I'm happy to help you navigate your way through this difficult time. Again, I'm not a financial expert by any means, but 
I'm more than happy to give you my two cents and help you find the best course of action for your goals. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this in the future, hit the like button, and share this with your friends and family if you think they would benefit from this information. Thank you again for your time, take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh,